Amen. It's great to see all of you here this morning. We are so glad to uh, be in God's presence together and to recognize His power as the great and mighty one that blesses us through all of our days. He gives us the strength and the hope and the care that we need in every way, and we're just so grateful that we can praise Him and give Him thanks this morning and appreciate all of you being here, appreciate uh, Diana and Dallas and Julie and our choir and our praise team and our folks upstairs and everybody that uh, participates, Brother Phil and uh, Brother Jake, and our ability to come together and to praise and honor and worship the Lord in all his glory and his majesty. I hope you've had a good week this week. I recognize we all uh, walk through the challenges of life every single day. And as we walk through those challenges, uh, God, thank goodness, is always going to be faithful. And he's going to guide us through those and help us in all the interruptions that we face in the day. Amen? Amen. All the interruptions of life. And Jesus, as we've been studying in the Gospel of Mark, uh, is uh, interrupted constantly with life and everything that goes on around him. And yet, uh, he ministers, he cares, he shows us and gives us the model and example to live by every day. And he gives us most of all the truth of the gospel of the kingdom, but he gives us beyond that our ability to be kingdom people that live in that kingdom every day and recognize uh, God's hand and his power walking with us all the time. Uh, we've, uh, I've tried to, to emphasize and show throughout the gospel of Mark as uh, the gospel writer does the immediacy of all of us coming to the Lord and saying, Yes, Lord, I'm going to follow. Yes, Lord, I'm going to obey. Yes, Father, I'm going to be faithful. And even when we falter, even when we mess up and make mistakes, as we all do, because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, yet God's forgiveness, His grace, and just like we sang a few moments ago, He is the wonderful, merciful Savior. He's the one who gives us mercy. We don't deserve freedom from our consequences, but He gives us that when we come to Him in obedience and care and love and His Word makes all the difference. And so we want to read it uh, this morning together. You'll find it again in the very last verses of Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, and as we look at the scripture this morning, uh, Jesus is still ministering in Gentile ter territory in the Decapolis, the place of the ten villages or the ten cities. And there as he ministers, he's confronted with people who want him to bring healing for a man who cannot hear, and he also has trouble speaking. And in doing that, Jesus shows us another, not just great miracle, but he also shows us another great truth, that we need to be people spiritually listening to what he has got to say to each one of us. So we're going to read in Mark chapter 7 and look at verses 31 through 37, and we're going to read verses 32 through 35 together in unison this morning. There are two slides of that, so uh, be patient. We're going to read all the way through both these slides together. You find it printed on the sermon notes inside your worship bulletin. If you'd like to read it that way, you'll see it on the screens behind me. Let me invite you, if you're able, let's stand together and let's read these few verses. Mark 7, beginning with verse 32, and let's say them together. Then they brought him to one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to put his hand on him and he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears and he spat and touched his tongue then looking up to heaven he sighed and said to them Ephatha that is be opened and immediately his ears were opened and the impediment of his tongue was loosed and he spoke plainly. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you today that uh, your word is relevant for each one of us in whatever circumstance we're in. You're going to speak to us a message that's individual and personal to every person. And Father, I trust you that your word never returns void, but always accomplishes exactly what you mean for it to accomplish in us. 
So help our spiritual ears be open today. Help us listen to what you would have us to hear. And help us follow you in obedience in the ways you would have us to move in this life. Thank you for the blessings of this morning already. For the songs we could sing and the prayers that we could pray. And the, uh, the, the fellowship we could have. And the Bible study that came beforehand. And right now, Lord, we just pray that as... All of that's taken place. We give you glory and all honor for who you are. And we come right now to your throne of grace and ask you to speak to us. And as you speak, Lord, help your people listen. And we pray this in the perfect name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. And please be seated. You know, back in the day a long time ago, people used to use ear trumpets when they had problems with their ears. You remember seeing pictures of that? Yeah, guy or gal had a little trumpet in there and say, hey, you know, they were trying to listen to what you had to say to them. Now, these days, we have sophisticated uh, hearing aids that are so amazing, you adjust them on your phone, on an app on your phone, and uh, you, uh, you can answer the phone, and it just goes directly into your hearing aids, and you can talk to people. You don't have to have anything hanging out of your ear. It's in your ear. And it's, it's amazing the things that we can do and the technology that's come to help us be able to physically hear. Now, often when I was growing up, if mom and dad wanted to say something that I didn't want to hear, you know what I did? I put my fingers in my ears like that and said, la, 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 la. You might do that too or might have done that when you're growing up. But you know what? We do that oftentimes in our spiritual lives. We put our fingers in our ears for things that we don't want to hear God say. We, don't, we, we know His will is plain to us, but we don't want to hear it. We don't want to do it. We want to be like rebellious children and say, no. No, Lord, I don't want to do that. The important issue for all of us as God's people is that God always knows the best for our lives. He knows the best for me. He knows the best for you. He knows the best for our families. He knows the best. He has the best plan, the best purpose, and the best intentions for all of us. So why are we so rebellious to hear what he's got to say? In this case here, We have a willing participant of someone who couldn't physically hear. And he couldn't speak very well because of his deafness. And so here he comes being brought to the Lord Jesus by uh, a group of friends, apparently. Again, departing from the region of Tyre and Sidon, Jesus came through the midst of the region of Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee on the eastern shore there. And then they brought him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, and they begged Jesus to put his hand on him. Now, there was a need. As people brought folks to Jesus all the time with great needs, there was a need. And that need was this man cannot hear, and this man cannot speak well because he cannot hear. He needs help. And Jesus comes, and the amazing thing about what he does is he doesn't make this man a spectacle before the crowd, but he takes the man away from the multitude, and there he communicates with him. Now, I I love Jesus' personal touch. You've noted all the way through the Gospel of Mark so far, Jesus doesn't just heal one way. The Scripture says they were bringing this man to Jesus so he could put his hands on him, so he could touch him as if I'm going to touch him and he's going to be made well. Well, yes, he could have done that. Last week, we talked about a Syrophoenician woman who was concerned about her daughter, and he just, Jesus just spoke the word, and the woman went back home, and her daughter was healed. The unclean spirit was gone. That's the way Jesus works. It, he tailor makes every single uh, miracle and amazing event in our lives to us. And he does it in a way, it's personal, it's individual, It's a joy to see Jesus work among people. Now, it's a great example for us that we as Christian believers would recognize that our God loves us so much that he not only sent Jesus into the world for us, 
But he sent Jesus into the world to teach us a way to live as we walk through this life every day with a sense of joy, being personal and, uh, and individual with one another, caring for each other, loving each other in God's love, and recognizing that God can heal us. He heals us here, but ultimately where does he heal us? He heals us in heaven when we go home to be with him. But yet, he loves us and he wants us to live in the very best way and plan and purpose possible. And so, here we see Jesus being confronted with this man and he is in this situation where Jesus takes him. And the Bible says this, as we were reading, he took him aside, in verse 33, from the multitude. And then he put his fingers in his ears and spat and touched his tongue. It's amazing. Jesus um, did, a, did a little bit of his own sign language, didn't he? He, he took his fingers and put them uh, in, it gives us the impression he put them in the deaf man's ears. And he, he wanted him to know, something special is going to happen to your ears, friend. And then he spits and he places it on the man's tongue. Something special is going to happen to your mouth, friend. Because that's the way Jesus works. He works individually and specially for us. But it comes back to us, are we ready to receive the blessing that Jesus wants to give? Are we ready to be individually ministered to every single day? Now, some people get the wrong idea about church. They think church is that place I come once a week to hear the Word of God. Church is that place you come once a week to celebrate what God's done in your life all week long and recognize, yes, He speaks to you through the Word today, but He speaks to you every single day if you let Him individually and personally minister to you. That's why it's so important to take the Bible, God's Word, and try to make it a part of who you are, to memorize it and place it inside you, to carry it with you, to use every opportunity and chance to read and study and allow God to speak to you in special times all the way through the week. It's not just meant for Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night or some other time the church comes all together. It's meant for you tomorrow and the next day and the next day after that. So, as Jesus ministers personally to this man, he shows us our need to be ministered to personally as well. Let me ask you something. Are your ears open to God's truth this morning? Are your ears open to God's truth? First thing I want you to see on your outline today. Be ready to hear the truth about real life. Here is a real-life situation. And the real-life situation is this man can't hear. And he can't speak well. Jesus communicates in his personal way. He places his fingers in his ears. I'm going to do something special for you. I'm going to free you today. Are you ready to experience what life is really about? Are your spiritual ears open to experience what life is really about. Do you know, when we experience Jesus, we ought to be able to experience him with all of our senses and not just uh, with our ears. We ought to be able to experience everything about who Christ is by what God has given us. And as he's given us all these senses in our lives, we sense in our heart, and our mind, and our spirit, God wants to speak to us. We also sense early on, before we become a believer in Christ, we sense there's something empty inside us, isn't there? Without without God and without a relationship with His Son Jesus, there's an emptiness here. And we're searching. You see people every single day that are searching in their lives, trying to find answers for what it means to live in this world. And they're disappointed, and some of them even get to the point, they're angry with God. They're mad about what they believe God has done to them, if they even believe there's a God at all. And as they're angry and mad about what life has done to them, they're missing the opportunity for God to minister to them, for them to experience God with all of their senses and experience 
his personal tailor-made relationship that he desires and wants to have with all of us. He wants to free us from this world. And he wants to free us that we might be able to live in a way that is a uh, blessing to him, but a blessing to one another. I love the passage in John chapter 11 when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Not just the fact that he raises him, but also what he tells everybody once Lazarus jumps his way out of that tomb and is standing there wrapped up in the grave clothes. In, in John chapter 11, verse 44, the Bible says, And he who had died, meaning Lazarus, came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. That's what God wants to do for all of us. He wants to loose us from this life and give us freedom to walk with Him every single day. He wants to free us from the death this world brings upon us. And He wants to give us a sense of His presence with us every day. The freeing presence to live with Him. He told, told them around Lazarus, loose him and let him go. We need to have that desire in our heart to hear about the real life of Jesus and live in that real life with him. Here is a man who had been stymied by life. He'd been challenged by life. If, he, if there was somebody who wanted to be mad at God, this uh, deaf man could be mad at God. Why did you make me this way, Lord? Why has this happened to me, God? We tend to always want to ask that why question, don't we? Instead of asking that next question, what do I do now? Since this has happened to me. What do I do now? Well in this case. He comes to Jesus. And Jesus sets him free. He's ready to hear the truth. About real life. And Jesus speaks to him. And communicates to him. In his own sign language way. I'm ready to do something special. In your life. I want you to know. That Jesus is ready to do something special. In your life. He's ready to do something special in your life. If you've been uh, mad at God. If you've been struggling with your relationship or why this has happened or this has happened, God wants to minister to you. He wants to love you through that. He wants to heal your spirit. He wants to turn you loose and let you go in this world with a sense of freedom to know He's not going to leave you here alone. He's going to walk with you in all that you do. Second thing I want you to hear this morning from this passage is we need to be ready to speak what's worthy to share. The amazing thing happened. This man immediately began to be able to hear. He, Jesus looked up into heaven in uh, verse 34, and he sighed and said to him in Aramaic, uh, Ephatha, that is, be open, meaning uh, open his ears. Open everything around him. And then his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke Plainly, you know, the Greek New Testament literally says the chain of his tongue was broken. Now think about that. The chain of his tongue was broken. He was no longer held back from hearing it all and saying it all. So he could hear, he could speak, he was not struggling anymore. People could understand him clearly. And I want you to know something. Our tongues can be released for good, good things. But they also can be released for evil, evil things. I want you to read along with me James chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Uh, James, the uh, pastor of the Jerusalem church, wrote this particular uh, letter. And as he spoke, he spoke some of the truest words in all the New Testament, James 3, 5 and 6. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts, a great, and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Iniquity is just another word for sin. Our tongues can either be used for the greatest joy and blessing, right? We can praise God on Sunday morning up here on the platform. We can sing uh, praises to Him. We can honor His name. We can read from His Word. We can come together with a sense of gladness. But then we can go outside and something happens. 
the world greets us. And the world may greet us with a lot of bad words and bad language and bad things, but even more than just bad words, how about taking the bad thoughts and translating those upon other people? You know, our tongues can be used for the greatest joy, the greatest encouragement, the greatest blessing, the, uh, the, the greatest of everything. But then we can allow our tongues to be harsh and ugly. And, and as my precious wife Julie tells me, sometimes it's not what I say, it's the tone in which I said it that gets me in trouble. Sometimes even your tone can be a problem, right? So we have to be careful when we're out in the world and we're among others and we are striving to be those encouragers, those uh, people that love others, care for others, have grace for others, have mercy for others, but yet often we allow our tongues to do other things. We may become angry and say things that we need not say. We may be those people that we never say ugly words, but boy, we sure tell some juicy stories. Let me let you in on a little secret. We talk about, oftentimes, the sins that bother us the most in the world. Murderers, adulterers. Uh, uh, we, we talk about uh, all the kind of movements of sin in the world and we come up with all those things and boy we stand against those things as we should what about standing against gossip what about standing against telling stories on other people let me let you in on a little secret if somebody takes you aside to share with you a juicy story about dallas over there then you know i'm just i'm just picking you out no, Dallas or anybody else, any of us, if they take us aside to tell us a little story about somebody, and we just say, oh yeah, and we just participate with it, don't you know that that same person is going to tell a story about you? Somewhere along the way. So what do you do when that happens? Well, you refuse to participate. You know, we need to get to the point where we lovingly refuse to participate. And we say, I'm not going to be involved with that. Not, because, not just because it's unseemly and it's the right thing to do, but do you know what? The Bible is filled with those passages of Scripture that tell us we're to be those people that walk rightly and allow God to be in control of our mouth. In Psalm 34, verse 13, the Bible says, Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. And then we also read in other passages in God's Word, in the uh, book of Proverbs, the 16th chapter, the 28th verse, the Bible says, A perverse man sows strife, and a whisperer separates the best of friends. That's when you get somebody aside and you start talking to them about Brother Phil. Or you, or you're talking about somebody and you're just whispering about, you don't want everybody to hear. We need to be very, very careful. Just as Jesus loosed this man and gave him freedom and gave him the ability to use his senses again so he could hear and so he could speak clearly, he also had now a responsibility. A, a responsibility to use his tongue wisely. We have a responsibility my friends to use our tongues wisely not to allow ourselves to fall into the Satan's trap that divides families and divides communities and divides friends from one another I, I really uh, am always spoken to by this passage in Ephesians in Ephesians 4 verse number 29 one that you ought to underline in your Bible let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth I guess I need to put in parentheses, except when you're watching the Braves play baseball. But I mean, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. What does that mean, edification? It means to build somebody up. 
When you're talking about some, you know, it's all right to talk about Dallas if you're building him up. Yeah, that Dallas, he's a great guy. Talk about him that way. But don't talk about one another with a sense of degrading each other. We're here to build one another up. Amen? We're here. I'm glad y'all are still awake. That makes me feel good. We're, we want to build each other up. We don't want to tear each other down. We want to, as we've been loosed and let go, as we've been freed, as our ears are open, let us hear the word of God. Let's speak it and let no corrupt word come from our mouths. Let us be those people that when somebody comes up to us and says, I'd like to share something with you. Do you know, that's what Baptists call, that, that's what gossip is. We call it sharing. I, love to, I like to share about somebody with you. Let's just don't share about one another. Amen? Let's be those people who are encouraging each other because the Bible is full of lists of folks who are not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And guess, what, guess who's on the list? Gossipers and whisperers are on the list. So listen to God's word. Let God use your ears, your tongue, your senses wisely. Last thing, be ready as we are uh, letting our ears and our, our minds be open to God's truth. Be ready to live astonished in the power of Jesus. This scripture that we read a few moments ago concludes, after immediately his ears were open, verse 35, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, then he spoke plainly. Then Jesus commanded them that they should tell no one. Now, why does he keep saying that? He keeps saying that because his primary goal and his primary direction is to teach the children of God, the Jews, the chosen people, the gospel of the kingdom. He is not primarily there to guide the Gentiles into truth, although we know they're going to come into the truth. So when Jesus is speaking to them, he is not trying to uh, uh, tell them uh, in shame, don't talk about this with anyone. His public ministry was among his people. And so he is striving to keep his public ministry focused on the people, although the Word of God, what do we know about the Word of God, is never going to return void. It's always going to accomplish more and more and more. And that's what happens here in this passage. It says, then he commanded them that they should tell no one, but... The more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. You see, they couldn't help but tell about what they'd seen and heard. Well, that's the way we should be, right? If, if we're Christian believers and we know the truth, we shouldn't be able to be restrained about telling what we've seen and heard. We need to be those people who are pro proclaiming. The Greek word, karizo here, means to proclaim, just like you're a preacher. That you are preaching and proclaiming the word of God, the truth of God, the love of God, the grace of God. The, the, more, the more Jesus told them to be quiet, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And the Bible says, and they were astonished beyond measure, saying. Meaning, beyond, beyond all doubt, all measure, all thought. Saying, he has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Jesus does everything well. Well, he's God. And they're recognizing little by little by little. I think the Gentiles do a better job of recognizing God than the Jews do. And the Gentiles almost immediately say, man, he does everything well. He's the and, and they get to the point where they're almost ready to declare him the Son of God. And as Jesus teaches, and as Jesus shows them how to live, and as Jesus overwhelms them with the truth and his spirit, they can't help but speak what they've seen and what they've heard. Brothers and sisters, if we want to see revival in our heart and the land, if we want to see God do everything he wants to do in our lives and our family's life, if we want to see everything God wants to do at Sandy Valley Church, 
we need to be overwhelmed with the amazement of Jesus. We need to be overwhelmed with who he is. We need to be set loose to proclaim with our tongues and with our lives. We need to be those people who recognize the spiritually deaf and blind in the world need the gospel of Christ. And we're set free to do what? Preach the word. In season, out of season, all the time. And we ought to be excited about that. We ought to be joyous about that because God has made us with a golden and wonderful opportunity in a season of time that is just so amazing. Just think about the time you're living in. You're living in a time where you're seeing Romans chapter 1 and Mark chapter 13 and Matthew chapter 24 all come to life before your eyes. We're living in the last days. And as we're living in these last days, we see the evil mounting around us, but we also know that God's word is more powerful than any evil in this world. In any speech impediment or any deafness or any problem, God's more powerful than all of it. And so he's given us this wonderful opportunity to speak. Let me share one last scripture with you. It comes from the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. It's God speaking to Moses. Do you know, Moses was called with this great calling to do what? To lead the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land, out of slavery that they'd been in for over 400 years. And God says, this is what you're going to do, Moses, and this is how you're going to do it, and this is Moses' response. Then Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I'm not eloquent. Neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, I love this, Moses, who has made your mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf? the seeing, or the blind. Have not I, the Lord? You see, God's master over all of his universe, and he's master over me and you. There is no excuse you can come to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm not a good speaker. I I may try to share the plan of salvation with somebody and spell the wrong word or say the wrong thing, uh, I, I, I may be so bad that somebody goes to hell because I try to share the salva- uh, plan of salvation with them. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. First of all, if you're trying to share God's word, guess who's in control? God is, not you. So using that excuse that you can't speak, that you can't do it, that you're too afraid, it's an excuse. God's given all of us who are believers, the opportunity to share in the greatest season of all to be alive. And that is before the Lord Jesus, our Savior, comes back for us, the church. So let us be those people who are zealous to proclaim, zealous to share. We see the, the, the folks on this side of the Sea of Galilee, man, they got excited. The more Jesus said, don't talk about this, they talked about it. And they talked about it and proclaimed it because they couldn't help proclaim what they had experienced. Brothers and sisters, those of us who are Christians, we've experienced a great salvation. Amen? We've experienced mercy and grace and the blood of Christ is all the reason. We've sung about it all morning long. So who is it in your life that needs to know the truth of Jesus? Who is it that you're praying over? Who is it that you're seeking the opportunity, just the open door, for you to start planting those seeds in their lives? Realize one thing. It's God's Spirit that's going to proclaim through you, not you. It's God's Spirit that's going to plant those seeds, not you. It's God's Spirit that's going to do all of this and not you. And when it says Jesus did everything well, what they're noting is Jesus did what only God could do. Only Jesus can heal. 
Only Jesus can open deaf ears. Only Jesus can free our tongues to speak the truth. Only Jesus is the one who saves our soul. So as Jesus has come for us, let us be those people who are open in our heart, our mind, our ears, our mouth. And let's let all our ears be open and let our mouths be open to speak the truth. Can you speak the truth? You can speak the truth because Jesus is the truth. And he's here for you and me. Amen? Lord God, you love us every day. You give us what we need. You provide all of the resources for our lives. And Lord, you open our ears so we can spiritually hear who you are and what you've done. I, I want to pray this morning, Father, for all of us in this room. I want to pray, first of all, for people in this room today who may have never chosen you or said yes to you and they've, they've struggled with anger they've struggled with being challenged by life and they've never known the freedom of knowing your son Jesus fully and totally in their lives I pray right now that Father whomever it is in this room that as you're speaking directly into their spiritual ears to their heart that they'll look to you right now and say, yes, I, I want to know Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. I want Jesus to be my Savior. So I'll know for sure I'm going to heaven when I die. And I'll also know for sure God loves me and is going to walk with me today. Father, I pray for those who are grappling in their hearts with serving you and being connected to ministry that you want them to be following in and a part of I pray that you'll give them confidence today confidence that you want to loose them and let them go and give them the freedom in Christ to serve you if it's here at Sandy Valley we praise God and, and ask God that you just work in their hearts and lives and lead them I pray father for those who are struggling with uh, sicknesses and diseases and problems and and like this man in our Bible story this morning who couldn't hear and he couldn't speak well, but yet you intervened and you worked. But you're the God of all of us. And you give us the promises to know that ultimate and perfect healing are going to happen with you one day. But until then, how do we serve you and how do we follow you and how do we accept you? I pray, Father, for that clarity of mind and heart today in people's lives. Lord, I pray that anyone here who just needs to come to this altar and be right with you that they give up telling stories that they don't have any business telling we all get in, get involved and fall into the traps of the world and many times talking about others becomes part of our trap i pray lord that you just free us from that today loose us and let us go Give us the freedom to live in this world and to trust you fully and to know that we don't need to let any corrupt word proceed from our mouth. And Father, I thank you for just being so loving and gracious and forgiving. Thank you that you're the God of forgiveness. Thank you that you forgive me today. You forgive all of us in this room, all that are watching online. Lord, you forgive us. And you cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we'll just ask. Right now, Lord, help us ask for your forgiveness. We love you and thank you. And right now, Lord, as your spirit moves in us, let us respond to you in faith. Let our spiritual ears be open enough to say yes to Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. What's God saying to you?